In this video, we want to understand the representation of an integer with respect to a base b. Let's do a theorem which shows that such representation exists with respect to any base and this representation is unique. The most common representation of integers with respect to the base is the binary representation and decimal representation. So in the binary representation, we consider the base uh, 2. So here we can say with respect to base 2 and with this in the decimal, we have the base 10. So now let's take an example corresponding to this with respect to base 2. Suppose if I consider 105 and I want to write this integer uh, with respect to base 2. So I will get the answer as 1101001. Let's see how I got this. If I want to divide 105 uh, with 2 again and again and notice the remainder. So when I divide this by 2, I will get 52 into 2 plus 1. The remainder is 1. And then do 52. This is 26 into 2 plus the remainder is 0. Each time you divide with only 1 power of 2 and notice what is the remainder. So this is 13 into 2 plus 0. 13 is equal to 6 into 2 plus 1. Then we get 6. This is equal to 3 into 2 plus uh, 0. And then we got 3 which is equal to 1 into 2 plus 1. And then we got 1 which is equal to 0 into 2 plus 1. So now writing this integer from top to above in this way. So you can see that we have double 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. This is the representation. And to write this representation again, we'll start from this integer. This will be the integer which is corresponding to 2 to, to bar 0. So this is 2 to the power 0. Its coefficient is 1. And or we may start from here just counting how many integers we have uh, here. But noticing that this would be 2 to the power 0. This is 2 to the power 1, 2 square, 2 cube, 2, 4, 2 to the power 5 and then we got 2 to the power 6. So we got 1 into 2 to the power 6 plus 1 into 2 to the power 5 plus some of the terms are 0. So we have 0 into 2 to the power 4 and let me to write this again. Plus, we got 1 into 2 to the power 3 plus 0 into 2 square plus 0 into 2 square plus 0 into 2 to the power 1 plus 1 into 2 to the power 0. So, this is the representation of any integer 105 or maybe we can write it for any other integer in terms of the base 2. Now, similarly, we have the decimal representation of an integer with respect to base 10. So for base 10, this is very simple. If you want to write for the base 10, suppose I consider an integer 1, 4, 9, 2. So now this is very clear. This is uh, unit place. This is the uh, 10th place, 100th place and 1000th place. So we can simply write this as 2 into 9 into 10. This one is actually 10 to the power 0. This one is 10 to the power 1. 4 into 10 to the power 2 and then we have 1 into 10 to the power 3. So here this representation is very simple. This is 1, 4, 9, 2 to the base 10. So which is actually the same number. So now let us do the theorem and it says given an integer b greater than 1, any positive integer capital N can be written uniquely in terms of the powers of b as n is equal to a m into b to the power m plus so on up till a 1 into b plus a naught where a k can take on b different values 0 1 2 up till b minus 1 because we are actually dividing this by b or we are saying that we are writing this in terms of the b or i could have simply write that a k lies between this uh, integer b minus 1 or we could also write that a k can be strictly less than b and we can also write this n in the abbreviated form this is a m a m minus 1 up till so on a 1 a naught to the base b. So this is the most uh, nice abbreviated form for the n and if I go back we can see that this is the abbreviation form when we have written the integer n with respect to base 10 and in case we want to write this with respect to base 2 105 this was we have used. Now let's prove the theorem and here we want to prove two things we want to prove that it can be written so this is about the existence and second thing we want to prove this is unique so there are two things that we want to prove in this theorem so let us start with the existence proof and for the existence we have considered two integer we have considered capital n and we have considered the integer b so let's divide so here we can say divide n by b so there exists a quotient q and a remainder r 
using the division algorithm remainder and i'm not uh, noting remainder r i'm just calling this as remainder as a not using division algorithm so that we can get the same sequence that i've listed earlier in terms of a1 a2 up till am so division algorithm proof i've already done in my earlier video even this talks about the uh, existence of the quotient and remainder and of course about their uniqueness so that means if this exists this particular step that i'm going to write is also valid so we have an integer n when divided by b we can have a quotient and let's call this quotient q1 into b plus the remainder a naught we know the remainder will not exceed the uh, divisor so a naught will lie between 0 and b and 0 is inclusive or we could have written 0 less than or equal to a naught less than or equal to b minus 1 this is also possible to write now if this q1 is less than b we can just stop this otherwise we say that if q1 is strictly greater than or equal to b we can divide it one more time so we can divide once more and repeat this process once more we divide we obtain q1 is equal to divided of course by b we get another quotient and we got another remainder and so we get 0 less than a1 less than b because again we are dividing it by b so this is the condition on the remainder and now substituting back this value of q1 in n we get q1 is replaced by q2 into b plus a1 into b plus a0 so this is here i got this relation which is equal to q2 into b square plus a1 into b plus a0 so we see that we are getting now the increasing powers of b here this one is b to the power 0 we got b to the power 1 and we got b square and now we have to again see whether q2 is greater than or equal to b or not if it is then we continue again and going one more step down to get the next remainder a2 and so we get n is equal to q3 b cube plus a2 b square plus a1 into b plus a0 and we continue the process so in this way we keep on continuing the process so we have to always see that the last quotient that we get whether this is still greater than or equal to b if it is we have to divide if not we stop that process so continuing this process and we note that this capital n was an integer and every time we are getting a quotient which is smaller than uh, the previous one this is always greater than or equal to zero this is a strictly decreasing sequence so this process must terminate and let's say this has terminated at m minus 1 at stage and once we say that it's terminate so we can say that q m minus 1 this is equal to q m into b plus a m minus 1 this a m minus 1 is a remainder so it follows the same condition and it it stopped at this stage this means what we are saying that this new uh, quotient is actually now strictly smaller than b or we can say strictly less than b and so now we can simply set or you can rename setting a m is equal to q m what we'll get we'll get n is equal to so whenever we get a new quotient as we follow up from the previous steps whenever we get this replaced by q2 so this is the last q2 if i write q1 in terms of q2 so here when i'm replacing qm minus 1 with respect to qm so in my n the last and i have also replaced qm by am am into b to the power m plus am minus 1 b to the power m minus 1 plus so on up till a1 into b plus a naught so this is the representation that we were expecting to have so irrespective whatever be the base whether we want to keep the base as uh, binary 2 or decimal 10 or maybe the base 8 or base 16 and so on it is possible to write any integer with respect to any base b and now we talk about the uniqueness and for the uniqueness let us say that n has two distinct representation so i'm just assuming on contrary let us suppose n has two distinct representations so once it has two distinct representation we can say the uniqueness will not hold but we want to find this um, as a contradiction that's not going to follow up and so for the contradiction purpose i have considered initially that n has two distinct representations so one representation is this that we have just considered with the same a1 and b is variable and the another representation i consider coefficient as cm into b to the power m base i have to keep the same because base and the main integer capital n they are same the only difference uh, is the coefficient that we get here so or we can say that if this is a representation uh, written in the abbreviated form with respect to base b 
this is different from the cm uh, c1 into c0 to the base p so that means when we say that these two are different representations some of these value that we are storing in ais and we are storing here in cis they are distinct with the same condition that uh, ais are strictly less than b and the condition on cjs are also less than so we subtract uh, the second representation from the first one because they are appearing in the powers of b so that can be done we see that this is zero this is equal to dm b to the power m plus so on up till d1 into b plus d naught where what i am doing is i am just simply writing di is ai minus ci for i varying from a zero to m so whenever you just simply take this C naught on this side, this is A naught minus C naught, which is D naught. And then again, A1 minus C1, this is stored in D1. And AM minus CM, this is stored in this. BM is common. B to the power M is common. Now as two representation for N, they are assumed to be that they are not same. So that means some of these DI should not be equal to zero. And so we say that di is not equal to 0 for some values of i. Let k be smallest subscript for which dk is not equal to 0. Since we said that for some values this is not going to be 0, just choose the smallest subscript when this is not equal to 0. And for the other subscript this is 0. So we can take dm, uh, bm plus so on because we have to choose the smallest. So smallest has to be selected from this side onwards. And let me to keep this as dk times bk k is a subscript for which i have selected that dk is not equal to zero for all other value on this side their value is zero dk is uh, d k minus one or dk minus two they all are zero so these values i am leaving at to zero although we started from d naught and now take a uh, dk on one side uh, b to the power k and keep all other quantities on the other side so we have dm b to the power m plus so on plus dk plus 1 into b to the power k plus 1 and here we got a negative sign now divide by b to the power k so if i divide b to the power k on both sides what i will get i will get minus dm b to the power m minus k plus so on plus dk plus 1 b to the power 1 so you can see that we already have here this power k plus 1 and then we have this k so if i divide it by uh, or i can say multiply b to the power minus k so this remains only b and then each term has a b in it so let's take b common we got dm b to the power m minus k minus 1 plus so on plus dk plus 1 so now if you notice again this last expression we can see that dk appear as a multiple of b this appears as multiple of b because on the right hand side we are multiplying uh, something with b so there is an expression that we are multiplying with b to get dk so we can rewrite we can write this as or b divide dk or we can say b divide a k minus c k because what was dk dk was a k minus c k this is the initial conversion we have considered and we also notice what was the uh, bound on a k and c k this was a bound c k was also lying between strictly less than b if i just take this negative bound so this is minus b negative of c k less than zero and then you simply add these two so we get minus b strictly less than a k minus c k strictly less than b or i can say absolute value of a k minus c k is always less than b or i can say now that absolute value of a k minus c k is less than b or because this is d k so we can say that absolute value of d k is less than b but on this side we are getting b divides uh, d k if b divide d k definitely b divide absolute of d k so here we are saying b is dividing absolute value of dk and on this side we are saying d is less strictly less than bk so this is possible only if dk is zero so that means we can say b divides zero which is universally true so if dk is zero so this means we can always say that ak minus ck is equal to zero whenever ak minus ck is equal to zero that means ak is equal to ck and this is true for uh, any value k we have started k to be smallest and similarly this result is going to hold for all the other uh, subscript also it is not going to every time it is going to leave us this contradiction so we say that uniqueness follow so any uh, integer written in a particular base uh, with respect to a base 
whether it is binary representation or the decimal representation this uniqueness is going to hold